Hello. Hey, I'm not coming on here because I feel like I've got the answers. So don't look to me for the answers. But I'm just one messing around in my thoughts and I was thinking to myself that there has to be more than this chasing something in the journey of life in order to feel like we've gotten there, wherever there might be, you know. So it might be around the corner, a next shot at happiness or um, at peace or feeling like we don't have bills hanging over our head or that we're able to achieve this thing or we're on the right path or once we've made amends or once we've got that promotion, all those things that we hear about all the time. But here's the thing. I think that when we start being present with what we have in the here and now, we start looking at life a little bit different because we've, we're looking at it with receiving it with, a, with an open heart. And it could be something as simple as hearing a child laugh or having a song in your heart. Like I wake up every single morning and I have a song in my heart. And sometimes it's a song that I've made up you know, somewhere in my dreams or something that's been given to me and I wake up with it. And sometimes it's a song that I've long remembered, you know. There's no particular genre and it's not always about the words. Sometimes it's about how it makes you feel or it aligns, resonates with what you're thinking or feeling at the time or it might just have a groove that's pretty groovy at the time. And I think just to soak in that is enough for a moment because when we do that, we're also we're making ourselves or I'm making myself aware of where it is that I'm at in that particular moment. It's okay to hold that moment of sadness for a moment and just to examine it, to see what it's about and where it comes from. I know you don't need my permission to do that. Maybe I'm sounding it out because I do need that permission from myself because for a lot of years I felt like I had to wear this mask of who I should be for everybody else. The truth is, the reality is that I didn't succeed. You know, some people, very few, I might add, could see through that. But, you know, for the rest that couldn't, I really wasn't fooling myself. I was fooling them. So at the end of the day, I would come home really exhausted. I'd come home as in back to myself, totally bereft of every piece of energy I had because I'd given it all away. You know, I felt like that was my role in life. And I still do to a degree. I feel like I was born with this conscious love, that that was my whole point to being on this earth was to love because I felt like that was the one thing I could do well. And sometimes I have to question why I thought that because I haven't always been successful. But it's not for the one to trying. So getting back to the first point, if we're always chasing something for it to be all right, like if we're chasing to for that holiday, you know, that holiday that we've been waiting all year or two years or three years or whatever, for that move to wherever we want it to go to, for selling the house or buying a house or for having a baby or for getting married or for whatever it is, you know, I'm not telling you what timing is right for you. You have to work that out. But for me, I think it's that I shouldn't wait for that. I shouldn't be looking for that. I should just look at where I'm at already. I should perhaps glorify the fact that I'm alive and I'm breathing and I have access to the great outdoors, which I've just come in from. And that even on a day where it's not shining, even the cold has something beautiful to teach us. And even that cool breeze feels good on our skin, you know, or that, that waft of the scent of a flower or a fruit as it touches my lips and my tongue. I like all of that. It's absorbing into the moment, being present on this beautiful God-given earth. We're so abundant with life here. And even when it is not a good life that we are immersing ourselves around those sort of energies, even then we are still making a choice that if we are conscious about, we can do a little bit better for ourselves. And in doing that, you know, when you hear that saying about shining a light for others, I don't think that it's about giving, even if it's your love language, just giving to others. It's also about receiving on some level, giving to yourself, not at the exclusion of others, but giving to yourself enough to just replenish what might have been gone and then to be able to emanate that 
integrously from deep within. So it's not about how I present myself to the world. Do I look right? Is my hair brushed right? Am I wearing the right clothes? Um, am I giving off the right body language to this person? Am I singing the right tune? You know, it's more about who am I and how far have I personally progressed spiritually and emotionally um, and physically too, but how far have I gone in the past up to this point and how much can I celebrate in that and relish in that? And then in that, other people will see that this is a good life and that when they approach me, they're sharing in the space of that too on a daily basis. You know, I don't know. I hope that makes sense.